This is Jared Horak, and I'm back with my next 2023 Belmont Stakes video. And I'm going through in these videos, covering two horses in each video. There's 10 horses overall pointing to the Belmont Stakes right now, Sunday, June 4th, six days to the Belmont. And they're going to be drawing the post positions early next week, and the field will be set. But right now, 10 horses are pointing to the race. So I'm going to be doing five videos covering two horses in each video. And you can see all of those videos on my YouTube channel. I covered Angel of Empire and Archangelo in my first video. I did Forte and Hit Show in my second video. Bill Miracolo and National Treasure, your Preakness winner, in my third video. And in this video, I'm going to cover Ray's Cane and Red Route 1. Now, if you're interested in my annual of Belmont Stakes Day full card at Belmont Park, you will find that Belmont Stakes Week at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. And as an added bonus, if you do purchase that Belmont Stakes Day full card, I will throw in the stakes races from Belmont Park for Friday, June 9th. Multiple stakes races that day, and then a big day Belmont Stakes Day full card. Um, you should go over to therunawayhorse.com, offer more details if you're interested in any of that info. And um, for um, the Preakness Day this year, um, I had a lot of success on that full card. I went 7 for 14 with my top choices multiple winning wagering strategies throughout the day, including the Preakness Stakes, my top choice national treasure, had a nice win wager on him, multiple copies of the Trifecta and the Superfecta, and made a nice profit in the Preakness for the clients for Preakness Day and the Preakness itself. And let's see if we can carry that momentum into the Belmont Stakes. As for the Belmont Stakes, um, I've covered that full card for many years. And from 2014 to 2022, uh, for the Belmont Stakes, um, I've had uh, winning tickets uh, for, in my full cards in seven of those nine years. Had some big winner winners uh, a few of those years. Uh, Taprit, uh, in a big super factor that year. Uh, I've hit it the last few years. Um, and let's see if we can keep that going and get another Belmont Stakes winner. I've had some good exactus trifectas and super factors. And uh, let's see if we can get some more success. Carry that Preakness success over into the Belmont and just keep chugging chugging along and doing well in the Belmont Stakes. And um, the first horse I'll talk about in this video will be Ray's Cane. This is a son of violence, and Lemon Drop Kid is the dam sire. So I see some stamina influences in this pedigree. I'm not against his pedigree, uh, really, in here. Uh, ben Colebrook is the trainer. And for this one, um, Junior Alvarado will ride. And he's two for um, eight overall. He has a second and a third as well. He broke his maiden second time out last fall at Keeneland in a sprint. Um, then they finally did stretch him out in his fourth start. The Gunrunner Stakes, a Kentucky Derby points race. Jace's Road was able to go and win that race up on the pace. Ray's Kane was along for second there. His next start of the Leonidas Stakes, Turfway Park on all-weather ground. That wasn't his thing there. He finished fifth, um, just really didn't. A run a quality race after stalking the pace. Maybe he didn't like that all-weather ground. Back to the main track, he caught the mud in a one-turn mile in the Grade 3 Gotham Stakes. That's the race that got him qualified for the Kentucky Derby uh, because in that race he dominated post 11 in a 14-horse field, had some early trouble. That didn't matter because the pace was quick that day and it was a wet, tiring track and he was able to just rumble from off the pace and he won by seven lengths. He went from 11th and then he moved up steadily and he took the lead in the stretch and pulled away and won by seven at, as a 23 to one long shot there. Now his next start was the grade one bluegrass. Didn't have as not much luck there but that race didn't really set up for him. He was in post 10 and 11 horse field. He ended up finishing an okay fifth. And then in the Kentucky Derby um, uh, th that race actually did set up for him. He had uh, plenty of pace out there. He was sitting back in uh, ninth and then he was 11th and then he could only muster eighth place, beating 10 lengths there. Well, he wasn't embarrassed. He was 33 to 1. He wasn't really expected to be a solid contender in the Derby. Um, any any finish kind of where you thought he would, um, maybe a little higher than, than expected, uh, but really no threat uh, to the top uh, finishers in that race. So now Ray's Kane, the thing he has gone for him is that Kentucky Derby angle that I've mentioned uh, in my other videos. Of course, it's that ran in the Derby, skipped the Preakness, run in the Belmont Stakes, They've won uh, the, the Belmont Stakes 11 times since the year 2000. So he's one that he has that angle going for him. I said, I'm not, I don't hate his pedigree. He has some nice stamina influences on the damn side. And he's one that uh, maybe could get a minor award. I, I would be surprised if he went any higher than probably fourth 
uh, in, in, the, in the Belmont Stakes. He'll be back there. He, does, he doesn't have to be a huge closer. He's been able to stalk the pace before. And um, with a slow pace expected, I would think that he's going to be within hailing distance probably. Uh, but when the real one running begins, he just hasn't proven to be a grade one horse. Because in his two grade one races in the bluegrass, he really wasn't a threat uh, in fifth. Um, well beaten there. And then the Kentucky Derby, not a threat there either. Uh, so now I'm not expecting him to jump right up there. He seems more like a grade three type at this time. Don't blame him for taking a chance in the Belmont Stakes. And we'll see how he does. But overall... I don't consider him a real contender in the Belmont Stakes. Now, Red Route 1 for trainer Steve Asmussen. Uh, this one will be ridden by Joel Rosario, and he's won the Belmont a couple times. Steve Asmussen won the Belmont Stakes creator, uh, was his Belmont Stakes winner. And he's one that he has a lot of experience this horse. He's run 10 times, two wins, two seconds, and a third. The son of Gunrunner, Tappet is the damn sire, and Tappet shows up in a lot of pedigrees. Um, we've seen him on the damn sire side in multiple um, horses. And then in this final video, he's going to be the sire of the final two horses that I talk about. So Tappet is a strong stamina influence for the Belmont. He has sired four Belmont Stakes winners. And this horse began his career on turf and he actually graduated in a turf route at Kentucky Downs second time out. They moved him over to the main track, the Breeders' Futurity. Your two-year-old champion Forte won that one. Red Route 1 rallied for third at 59 to 1 odds that day. And then his next start in the street scent stakes in the slop, he ended up finishing a well-beaten fifth. Two fills, your Kentucky Derby runner-up won that race. And then in his next start, the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club stakes, no pace, not a great trip there. Instant Coffee was able to get the job done as much the best. And then in his next start, the Southwest stakes, uh, that was a wet track. Arabian Knight was able to get out there, a highly regarded Bob Baffert runner, and he had too much speed. And he was much the best. And Red Route 1 was able to rally to finish second that day. And he did exactly the same thing in the Rebel Stakes. He rallied from a last place. And he was able to get up and finish second. Beaten a length behind confidence game. And Reincarnate was third. In his next start, the Arkansas Derby. He stubbed his toe there. He just did not run a good race putting flickers on for the first time. He was off slow. He flattened out. He ended up finishing sixth. Beaten five lengths. His next start was a win and you're in for the Preakness Stakes the Bath House Row Stakes, and that was at Oakland on April 22nd, and he went um, from the back of the pack, and he rumbled home, and he caught Tappet Shoes, my top choice there, at the end of that race, and Victory Formation was third, um, your Smarty Jones Stakes winner from earlier this year. So Red Route 1 added Lasix that day, showed a nice late kick, his second start in Blinkers. The Preakness Stakes last time out didn't set up for him. He likes to just sit back and get pace help and rally, and they tried to make an early move because there was no pace going on. Joao Rosario attempted to get him involved. He had ridden him um, to victory in that bathhouse row. And then he thought, pace is slow. I got to make a move here if I'm going to have any kind of chance. And then he just kind of hung in there. He moved up and just finished fourth, beating a little more than four lengths. So solid enough effort behind National Treasure, Blazing Sevens, and Mage. And now the Belmont Stakes. I don't think the distance is really going to cause him the, any real issues in here. It's just going to be the pace of the race. He likes it when he can really get involved late uh, when he gets pace help, like he did in that bathhouse row stakes where he got some pace help and enough there to get up in time, and the rebel stakes, and the southwest stakes, and the breeders' futurity. He was able to come chugging along and uh, running at the end of those races, but the Belmont stakes at a mile and a half, it's more of a galloper's race. The horses are just going to get into a nice steady rhythm. And he's one that he's not going to produce that big kick at a mile and a half. Horses, big closers, usually can't produce that kick at a mile and a half. They just can't sustain it that long. And the race shape does not set up for him. He's one that he's done enough in the stakes ranks. He has enough class to be considered maybe for the trifecta, but uh, probably more for the superfecta if you're going to use him at all. So Red Route 1, a minor player it looks like. Uh, in that Belmont Stakes uh, based on the race shape and what we've seen in his career so far. Uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. One more video to go on these contenders. Uh, Tappet Shoes and Tappet Trice will be the horses that I will cover in my final video. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. Mm -hmm.